on this episode of Open Homes. A house that blurs the line between art and architecture. A lot of people don't realise that architects are really artists. James gets a tour of this stunning coastal home. Some striking street appeal in Brisbane. Mike, this looks fantastic. We get a special tour of the homes from the Block 2020. Plus, Dave Franklin gives us a schooling in classical garden design. And at the climax of the show, a modern twist on the classic beach shack. So if you see that, you just go, we're home now. Come with us as we step inside. Welcome to a fresh new series of open homes. Now, we know it's been a challenging year for everyone. Thankfully, some pretty incredible builders and architects have come through to deliver some really special homes. Some have to be seen to be believed. So get ready to be inspired. Welcome to Open Homes. Well, when you think of Turak, you think tradition and prestige. You wouldn't necessarily think you're going to see a home that's going to break any kind of boundaries. But this next house is an absolute masterpiece. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. When I knew that I was seeing you today, I knew that I wasn't going to see a normal house. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> you won't. So I couldn't help but notice Jab House. Yeah, Jab House. Yep. It's actually the initials of our family, Georgia, yes. Alexia, Roselba, Billy, oh. Art House. I can tell this is an extension of you guys and your family. Yes, it's definitely an extension of us and all yep. our uh, ideas and aspirations for 14 years since yep. we had our first child. The house is really about reconnecting art and architecture as one discipline. So it's in the 21st century, we consider these things as separate things. Uh, a lot of people don't realise that architects are really artists and the whole house is really a play on that idea, but also incorporating the love of architecture and art that I have in, into one thing in the family home. This house is a neo-baroque home. So we took yeah. the principles of Baroque architecture and we yes. translated them in a contemporary language. So we've tried to incorporate some of these ideas, and not in a literal way, but in a contemporary way into the house. Yeah. So what you'll see in the house with this beautiful, ostentatious, big staircase facade and this big porthole is really what people were doing 500 years ago, but yeah. we're doing it today in a more contemporary way. So Baroque was the period that appealed to me most because it fused all the arts, sculpture, painting, all of it was sort of captured in the architecture and it also broke a lot of the rules. So all the symmetry that you find in Renaissance architecture was basically removed in Baroque and they broke all the rules. And that was really interesting to me. And the fact that it incorporated and embraced all of the, the arts as one discipline was something very interesting. So this is what we're trying to do here. What is the mural on the facade? So the mural is actually 13 murals mm -hmm. uh, done by this amazing artist called Pichuavo. Oh, yes. And they're from Spain. And we saw their work about four years ago for another project that we're working on. And I love the fact that they're painting essentially Greek gods yes. from 2,000 years ago in graffiti. And the murals are done in London, in Spain, in New York. And we contacted them and we're able to get their, the rights to use the work. And we've put it all around the facade. So it sort of goes hand in hand with the Baroque theme. So it's basically digi glass, mm -hmm. uh, which is laminated glass with uh, a, a film inside, mm -hmm. and it has the artwork in there, and you can see it from the inside and the outside. As I was walking in today, I, I nearly fell over, to be honest. One, because I was gobsmacked, this house is outstanding, but I was also trying to read the poetry that you've even got from the, from the get-go of the house on the path. The house has got a lot of the art that I've been collecting over the years and yep. the art that I've done myself. Uh, I do a lot of poetry, I do a lot of sculpture, wow. photography. And some of the other pieces are basically commissions that I've done from people from all over the world. Billy, you've absolutely just pulled out all the stops. This is amazing. I love that theatre room downstairs. It's so refreshing, the colour. It's a good space to sort of have a completely different experience and also soundproof. Kids can go down there, we can go down there and experience something else other than being in the general house. This is not a normal house that you just go and have a look at. You experience this house, don't you? That's the idea. <laughs> we, try, we try and make everything sensory and have a different experience in different rooms. And also to uh, kind of go past the little poker table on the corner. Poker table, <laughs> yes. We've been playing poker for 23 years with my oh, friends that's and that's awesome. purposely built for that. Again, just you've made a house for you and your family. Absolutely. Such yeah. a representation of everything that you are. Yes, absolutely. 
So talk me through that um, great little guest bedroom that's tucked away on the side there. So we are a family of four. Yep. Um, we have a four bedroom home, but we don't need a spare bedroom. Mm -hmm. But my father-in-law built this house with me, so it's really when he comes and stays, which he hasn't done yet, to go in that room. Oh, tell me about that process of building the house with your father-in-law. Uh, it was great, actually. Um, he was the first one here and the last one out, yeah. so um, we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a good experience. It was a great experience. Uh, my father-in-law's built lots of houses with me, uh, lots of projects with me over the years, so um, to build my own home was quite a privilege, actually. I love the idea. The moment I saw it, I knew that he was on something different. Knowing Billy the way I know, he's always got something different coming up. And I think that was the most difficult part about building the home, was to slow Billy down with new ideas, because we'd get into it, three quarters through it, and he'd come up with another idea. But in all fairness, it worked out, worked out well. You know, when you're an architect and you design a house for yourself, you wear your heart in your sleeve. Yes. And if it gets a bit of attention and people see it, um, you know, it's there for warts and all, but as I said before, I think it's important to share ideas yeah. um, and just experience this with everyone else. So we're in this space here and again, I'm just absolutely floored. Going down that beautiful circular staircase really, again, has that circular theme, doesn't it? Circular staircase uh, was made out of eight mil rolled steel and there's only two companies that I know of that can do it in Victoria. It was a mission to actually get the steel into the house. We had to crane it from the street into the house and the guys who did it did a magnificent job. It was a very difficult detail to execute, actually. What were the neighbours thinking? <laughs> uh, we got a mixed review with the neighbours. Um, by and large, most people love it and engage with the house. There's a few people um, who, you know, don't really respond well, but, yeah. you know, that's with everything. It's really cool how many colours you can pick out of the natural timbers and, and the natural stones as well, isn't it? And it's a challenge because, as you've seen in this house, there's lots of colour. And sometimes, you know, it can be a challenge because you have this collision of colour. But the idea is to pull strands and threads of all these materials that have a commonality about them. Yeah. And then that's how you execute, I suppose, how you curate everything. Yes. So a lot of the furniture that you see through here, my wife has put, put together over a long period of time. Yeah and we're not allowed to touch or move. <laughs> That's okay, she's done a fantastic job, I'd be the same. She has, yes. <laughs> the white porcelain tiles that you see actually starts from the front of the house and goes all the way to the back. Yeah. That is actually the circulation space of the house, but ultimately is the art gallery. So the space that you use that you go from one space to the other is actually the art gallery itself. And that's where you'll find all the artwork through there. And the idea is that, again, it connects every room. So from you'll start from the outside, you'll come into the house and you'll end up outside again. It's been such a great experience actually experiencing coming. this house. Thank you for coming. You're welcome anytime. Yeah, thank you. What are the plans? Where are you going after this one? Um, well, my wife said to me that we're never doing this again. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't think we've got plans to do anything else after this. So I think we're here for a while. Up next, a striking home in Sydney's Northern Beaches. And later, we get a special tour of the Block 2020. Next, we head to the northern beaches of Sydney for a coastal home tour with James. Welcome to North Curl Curl on the northern beaches of Sydney. This stunning coastal location is full of amazing architecture like this stunning home. What do you think? It's filled with great contrast, beautiful timber tones and outlooks out over to the ocean. It looks great on the outside, but I can't wait to check it out on the inside too. James is catching up with Open Homes favourite Paul from Peninsula Homes, who has amazed us every series with his stunning coastal builds. I can't wait to see what he has for us this time. It's great to walk into, <laughs> Paul. I love this. Crikey. What's not to love about oh. that, hey? Mate, it's all about that view, isn't it? I mean, this is an amazing location. Yeah, it hits you straight as you walk in the front door. I don't know whether I could actually bear living here because I wouldn't want to leave. I just feel like you're on holidays every day of the year. Did the clients have this site or did they go searching for this site? They had this site for a couple of years. Yeah. Hadn't lived here, but did have the site and had DA approved plans by a local architect, yeah. um, Archisol. But we actually went back into council mm -hmm. with some revisions to those uh, original plans. 
this is an amazing location. We are slightly sloping, so it has to be sort of pretty specialised for the site, which is important, but I think it's all about that angle, isn't it? I mean, that's the views. It looks like we almost have 180 views out to the ocean. We do. We see right up the coast, um, the golf course at Long Reef, and then you practically feel in the water when you look out that side. And I can feel that beautiful breeze just flowing through here. I mean, this is a large open plan space, but it feels even larger because of these massive windows. Yeah, the windows really connect you to the outside and certainly the bifold doors connect you through to the our fresco and the pool out there. Mm. Um, and then that ocean breeze is, is ever present in this location. From the outside when I turned up, the house particularly strikes me the way it sits on the block, but also your use of finishes. You've got that nice contrast between the dark windows and the white walls, but that beautiful use of timber. Talk us through the, the, the facade choice. Uh, so the spotted gum came together with the exposed steel um, and really gave some interest to the home and we use the spotted gum in locations up under the eaves particularly where it doesn't get exposed to the weather yeah. and that ever-present salt air. So it stays looking good and doesn't need that maintenance. As a builder, I mean, that's an important thing, isn't it? I presume you get clients coming to you with their wish list of things that they like, but they don't know how they're necessarily going to perform. And, and that amazing view can also be a shocking view when it's really strong winds and storms and, and, and everything that's being thrown out by absolutely, Mother Nature. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's where our local experience knows the particular spots around the beaches. And we do put forward homes that are easy to maintain because yep. you don't want to spend your life looking after it. No, you want to be sort of out enjoying this amazing location rather That's than right. just maintaining the house. You've also got the timber in those nice little eaves around the central level, just a slightly giving that filtered light. You can sort of see it on the floor there. So yep. they're actually opened. Um, that was obviously an obvious choice. Yes, that's right. And just the sizing and design of those allows the winter sun in mm -hmm. below them, warms it, warms the slab, and then the summer sun is shaded by those. You talk about the seasons here. I mean, you're very much going to be witnessing these. This, I don't mind when the storms hit. I think it sometimes can be so moody and really rich to, to see it coming in from the sea. It's about making a house that does perform for both, you know, summer and winter and everything in between. That's right. And the, the structure of this home, and what a lot of people forget, is the structure actually makes this place quiet. When you, the storm's coming through and you close all the louvers up, mm -hmm. it actually feels secure and stable and actually really quiet in here, which is really important. It is really important. And why is that? What's, what's the structure? Talk me through with this, how this home's built. So we have a huge amount of wind load. Um, there's a cliff there to the ocean, mm -hmm. and we're up on the point south that way, uh, excessive amount of wind in the yes. location. So the structure is an all steel structure and then filled in with timber yeah, to absorb that wind load and stay rigid. It is so quiet here. All I can hear is the bubbling water from the pool behind. Beautiful. It feels very relaxing. Yeah. We are actually in a three-storey home though, aren't we? Can you talk us through the floor plan? So we have an open plan living, dining and kitchen here. Um, upstairs there's three bedrooms and another living area. And then downstairs there's actually a further third living area and a Lego room. A Lego room? A le well, it's used as a Lego okay. room and it functions very well. You don't realise who you're talking to, mate. I'm really? the biggest Lego kid. <laughs> Wow. I love the ceiling in here. It's fantastic, isn't it? Showing the real structure of the home. Yes, it's just the raw concrete with one coat of undercoat on it. You know, it's become a big feature. It's adding texture to this space as well. Yeah, and it goes perfectly with the artwork on the wall. Yeah, I love it. I think they've added a bit of fun, haven't they? I mean, this is yeah. a, a family home with kids. This would be such a great destination and an important uh, living area in the home. The kids love it. This particular space in here, if I'm correct, was not part of the original plans. No, not part of the original plans. This was subfloor, mm -hmm. and the original floor level above us would have seen a ceiling height just above my head. Right. Um, so it's something that in the modification plans to council, mm -hmm. we raised the ground floor level, yep. which led straight out onto the existing alfresco, mm -hmm. um, also improved the view, yep. and allow for these two rooms to be built.
beautiful, isn't it? I think these homeowners just must never leave this place. They're sport for choice. You've got those amazing ocean views out there. You can go for a swim or you can just stay here in your own backyard. Yeah, it's a permanent holiday. I wonder, Paul, when you're working with clients, this connection that's so important in Australian homes between inside and outdoors, especially when you've got a space like this. Absolutely, and um, especially on the northern beaches, it's about connecting with the outside, mm -hmm. with that environment. It's a great build, congratulations. Thank and you. Um, thank you for sharing all of your advice and, uh, and this fantastic space with us today. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's good to have you here. Well, what can I say? It's an amazing home. Of course, the location is picture perfect, but to create a home like this, it's about creating a relationship with your builder, and they've definitely done that. And I love the fact that this home is so environmentally planned and thought through. There's no air conditioning in there, and yet the temperature is perfect throughout. This has been an absolute pleasure. I think it's time to go for a swim. Up next, some striking street appeal in Brisbane. And later... So if you see that, you just go, we're home now. Next up, Michael is in Brisbane to check out this head-turning home. The house behind me is the perfect example of how to use materials and textures to create an eye-catching facade. Brent from Sierra Group is changing the face of Brisbane's inner east house by house. But today, we're not here to check out this place, we're checking out this one. Mate, this looks fantastic. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty chuffed with how it turned out. Yeah, I'm loving your decision here. Obviously, you've developed both blocks and you haven't gone, you know, for the identical facade. You've sort of got like a yin and a yang here. Yeah, it was really important to have a point of difference for both the houses to be super modern and new, uh, but to have that point of difference between the two. Obviously, you've put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into these facades. With the garage door uh, being the focal point of a small lot home, we wanted to make sure that the treatment of that, the cladding, was really seamless and, and really uh, a great design. Do you guys work with an architect? On this particular project, we use Tim Stewart, who's a really well-known architect in Brisbane. And so he drove a lot of the facade and that uh, design bit, and then we really worked in-house on the floor plan and finding the efficiencies. What I'm loving about these facades is the material selection. You know, you've got this, um, you know, stucco render here. You've got spotted gum over there. It's really warm, isn't it? Yeah, the detail is, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of detail gone into the front of these. And that is about finding, you know, those little points of difference that make people feel that it's, you know, a really special home. Awesome, mate. Well, I'm excited. Let's go take a look. Yeah, let's go for a look. So you've obviously um, split this block, you've built this place for yourself yep. um, and next door is going on the market. It doesn't look like that easy a site to work with, you know, you've got these multi-levels throughout. Yeah, there's about three metres of fall from the back of the block to the front and so it was about finding obviously the efficient design with the floor plan but then incorporating that fall in. So we've got a few steps, you know, step out of the garage into the first level and then uh, about a metre of transition up into this living area. We talked about out the front, you know, the attention to detail, but you can really see that that detail has come inside. Yeah, I find that when we're creating a home, I think it's those small details that make it really special. And as you walk around, you notice different things every time. And uh, whether it's a shadow line in the kitchen or the way that we've done the windows and things like that, I think that the detail is really important. It would have been really easy for you to create, you know, just identical facades and, you know, straight walls, but you, you've gone against that. You've got curved walls. I mean, even look at this island bench, you know, it's not, you've got a little angle there as well. Yeah, the shapes, it's, it's funny, you know, we didn't really have a plan to have all of these shapes and create like this geo, geometrical sort of uh, architecture, but that's what's turned out. The curve as you come in really softens the entry and makes it feel a lot larger. And then the way that the void cuts through and the stairs and the angles, it's actually a real, and, and I'm not a sucker, for architecture, but it's a real architectural masterpiece. When you look at those angles, I think it's pretty special. Yeah, when you talk about those details too, you know, you have to be conscious of uh, cost, for example, during the build phase, but like it's just those little simple things that add a lot of drama to the home. Yeah, and I, people do notice. It's those little one percenters that, you know, like you talk about that, it's, it's co managing the cost of doing those things and doing them really well, but having things that when people walk in, they don't really know why they love the house, but it's all of those little one percenters that mean that they fall in love with the home. 
You can tell you're really passionate about, you know, developing, you know, you're not just in there to, you know, make a buck and get out. You know, you, re you really care about what you're doing. A big thing about our vision is helping shape the city. Obviously, Brisbane's um, going through a fantastic phase. We've got all this infrastructure and things happening in the CBD. And a part of that is obviously population growth and densification of the, of the city. And we want to be a, a major player in that area and doing our part to doing um, responsible development. Oh, well, I guess it shows, you know, you've built this place for yourself. You're living here, you know, so you're really um, living it. Yeah, practicing what we preach. So. Um, it's about lifestyle for us. We've got two small kids and so having a low maintenance home and doing things like the way we've done the gardens, the way we've designed the home is really designed around that busy lifestyle and having uh, little kids being able to go to the park, go to the shops and uh, just have convenience is what it's been about. All right, let's talk layout. What are we looking at in this home? Yeah, so the house is uh, 320 square metres under roof. It's five bedrooms. So we've got a guest bedroom on the lower level with a guest bathroom, which also acts as the uh, powder room for this level. And then we've got our kitchen dining living up here and then our backyard, which has a nice grass area in the pool. Upstairs, we've got four bedrooms, so the master and three bedrooms, a study, a second living area, everything that you want in a home. But uh, as I said, it's only 320 square metres under roof, so it's really efficient. That's amazing. It sounds like you were talking about, you know, a, a massive home on a massive lot. You've squeezed a lot into this space. Yeah, and it's once again comes down to lifestyle. I think it's got everything that you need to be able to live really comfortably, but it's not over the top or too big. It's really a manageable home. So when we talk about, you know, using simple materials well, this kitchen is a perfect example. Yeah, so we've used the uh, Evernex Lemonade, which has got the ravine finish, and it's like a really nice textured finish. Uh, two pack as well. And then we've got the Caesar Stone bench top. So uh, a very simple Caesar Stone uh, finish, but we've gone to some lengths to put detail into it with the beveled edge, which matches the drawers and things like that. Well, it looks like you've extended the details to outside as well. Should we go take a look? Let's do it. All right. And again, like you've done with inside, you've got a lot of detail out here. Yeah, and it's really important. A lot of these things about the way that the home works and that lifestyle. So instead of using glass pool fencing, we've gone for a nice aluminium design, allows for the breeze and if you've got children in the pool and also really easy to keep clean. Yeah, I guess a lot of developers, you know, put a lot of time into the facade, but you guys have even put a lot of effort into the back of the home. Yeah, that screen on the back is a really important part of the home because it creates a lot of privacy and it's a real statement piece from the back. So a lot of effort's gone into creating that. You've got your cantilevered steel as part of the framework and then the aluminium screen itself that's uh, attached to that cantilevered steel, which will be low maintenance, no painting, and uh, it's a big feature. All right, Brent, well, mate, thanks for showing me through. The place is amazing and I can see you're going to be enjoyed living here for a few years longer. Yep, thanks for coming through. It's been great having you. We head to Shots Home Emporium in Melbourne to check in with Jesse Rayburn for some tips and tricks you can use in your own home. We're bringing sexy back. Well, not me. The Calissa bed and bath range is. Because let's be honest, who doesn't love curds in the bedroom? Postmodern is so hot right now and the Calista range is the first of its kind to have both matching bedroom and bathroom furniture. When we were renovating our house on the block, it was very difficult to find a bedroom set to match with the ensuite, but the Calista collection offers just that. It's the perfect marriage between both and it ties everything together. Personally, I love the dark walnut. I think it adds a lot of mood and flavour to the bedroom. However, there is the lighter oak option, which you would have seen in House 5 on the block. Not only is it a beautiful piece of furniture, but it's super practical. It's got drawers on both sides, so plenty of room to put extra clothes. And one of my favourite things would have to be the curves and the fact that it's elevated, so you don't have to worry about stubbing your toes during the middle of the night or hitting your shins as you're walking around the bed. Up next, we see that hard work in all its glory with a tour through Harry and Tasha's house from the Block 2020.
Next up, come inside the finished homes of The Block 2020 with dynamic duo Dave Franklin and Jesse Rayburn. First up, it's House One by Harry and Tash. Oh, wow, Dave. Talk about street appeal, mate. This could be one of the best facades I've ever seen on the block. Yeah, this one here, these guys were up against it all the time. I was here, okay. they had different trades coming and going, but you know, to see it like this, not only is it the cleanest I've ever seen this place, but it actually has started to grow in and you can see what they've done here. It's a very Mediterranean garden. Yes. Um, and it's got, I suppose, one thing that stands out, are these white bricks from PGH. Well, I love these bricks the way they've continued it and also kept the facade very neutral as well. I think it'll have a really broad appeal. Yeah, the only thing that we found was that obviously a little bit of dirt on the white bricks wasn't working out, but you can see the garden's growing now. It's a lot better. Um, we've got the water feature here and then we've also got the silver birches that suits the house. So yep. as a real estate agent, it's kind of ticking a lot of boxes, isn't it? Mate, it ticks a lot of boxes. It's, I think it's pretty sexy, to be honest. Really? Sexy? Yep, that's no, the word I'd use to describe two? it. Yeah, number two is sexy, but oh, mate, come on. You're not going there, are you? Dave, I'm trying to remain impartial here, mate. I love the archway. I love these pavers from PGH. I know what you mean, how they'd be dirty, but yep. trades aren't typically known for being very clean, right? They I'm are. sure when a homeowner's here, they'll yep. be able to step over the garden and actually walk on the pavers. Harry, yeah, he's Greek, obviously, so you can see a lot of his heritage here. You've got, obviously, like the lemon trees. Yes. We've got some bay trees as well at the same time. It does look like a bit of Greek in the front yard here. And I did notice a little bit of rosemary in That's the garden. Right. Well, there's a lot of things that you can use for cooking in here, but there's also more in the house, so let's go and have a look. Yeah, can't wait to see it. I'll tell you what, Dave, this is a bloody impressive room. I'm loving the pitch ceiling. It's already big, but with that pitch and the V-Lux skylights, it gives such a sense of space. So is this like a peacock here or is this a flamingo? It looks like you on the wall. You do a bit of peacocking, <laughs> don't you? I reckon I've seen you in the nightclub looking at this because with the velour and that, I think it does scream nightclub here. The V-Lux skylights you see, Mel and I are actually doing that same design feature in our house. So it's good to be able to see it in real life because it does have a huge sense of wow factor. That I've got this in my house as well. And I've right? got it on the other side of the ridge as well. So if you do want to see it, I have got the house of V-Lux. I think Kingsman have done a really good job with that makeup desk they've done. It's big enough for you. Also plenty of space for me. I actually take longer in the morning to get ready than Mel. So that's important. But on a design point of view, I love how they've carried the wallpaper, the green, into the bathroom, ties the space together, a bit like the front yard. Yeah, right, mate. Just, just go back on the makeup thing there. I do reckon you do spend more time than Mel in there, don't you? I don't wake up like this. Yeah. I'm not Beyonce. <laughs> I do not wake up like this. Yeah, all right, mate. Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think this could be the longest island bench I've ever seen Kingsman Kitchens do on the block. Like this is huge, isn't it? There's room for the whole. There's room for my family and yours. Yeah, you know what they're missing on this? What are they missing? A bit of a teppanyaki plate going through here. What there's enough space, isn't there, to have? You have teppanyaki here. through there. I'm loving these vertical lines as well on the joinery. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say though, like, do you think it's right when they, you know, stop it just there? Yeah, I think that must have been a design choice that Harry and Tash made, whether or not to build a bulkhead. I personally, I would put the bulkhead around so it doesn't look like the cabinet's just been put there, it's more yep. built in. But you can't fault the joiner, I think it's sensational. And obviously the timber colour, the bench, you know, being the real estate yourself, are we Scandi, we boho? Well, I think this is we more boho. What, what, are, what are we on this one? No, this is definitely more boho than Scandi. Bit more earthy. I do love this stone though as well. It's quite it nice, nice with the matte finish as opposed to the polish. It'd be a Caesar stone, no doubt. I think it's really good. And I like the, so I'm a huge fan of two-tone. I like the matte finish with the white, contrasting with the timber up top. And I like how they haven't gone joinery all the way across. Yep. A few more open shelves. Like, it's a very big kitchen. There's plenty of storage, so you don't have to have too much. I think the buyers will like that. Obviously, good for styling as well. They, they actually won with this, this room here. With the living and dining? With the living and dining out here. So this is one of the rooms that they won.
I think out of all the homes on the block this season, this one has the best orientation and 100% the outlook. You've got the mature tree and a personal favourite is you're looking at over another period home, which is quite romantic. I am loving this balcony, Dave. I feel like Rose off the Titanic. Go on, hold me. Mate. Never let mate, me go. You goose. Go on. <laughs> I think Harry and Tash have done a fantastic job with this home. I think the facade is 10 out of 10, especially the orientation. Yeah, it does. It is good. And it obviously overlooking the garden as well at the same time. So all in all, I think it's a great facade, great garden, sir. Yeah, let's go grab something to eat in the sun. Let's do it. Next, we're in the leafy suburb of Camberwell in Melbourne to see a classic Day Franklin garden. We're here at a garden I did six years ago, and unlike me, this garden has matured unbelievably. Talk about a revisit. This was done six years ago and it's always great to come back and have a look at a job that's really established at the same time. When I rolled up here, I saw the young son, Jack, and he's 19 now. When I did this job, he was 13, now he's driving. So that's how long ago this job has been done. You've pulled me out of my Bayside bubble today, all right? So basically, this is not your typical Brighton job here. But what people don't realise is that I actually did all my training here in Camberwell. So basically, all the streets here, I've got one or two jobs that I've done before, and this is where all my classical training come. <laughs> well, a pro, man. Boom. I remember this design because this was one of the biggest ones that we'd already done. I was fresh starting with Franklin Landscapes as well at the same time. So this was a great job to have. The clients were absolutely amazing and they let us go do everything with this design. I remember when we first started doing the paving here and this is when the French pattern first become available at the same time and we have used the old reds. I think by memory, we actually, these were left over from the house. So I'm pretty positive this was around the porch. So we've actually used those and put them in as a band. And as you can see, it creates that great contrast. I suppose the art with this garden is to fit in a traditional garden that suits the house. And that's what we've done. There's so many heroes in this backyard, and I know I say heroes a lot, but I'm not using the term loosely on this one, so let's get out there and have a look. Talk about heroes. Water feature behind, pool and spa here, outdoor entertaining area, fireplace there, sunken down areas. May I go on? in-situ concrete. Now, this was done six, seven years ago, so this is before it's become a big fad. So, don't want to say we're one of the pioneers there, but, yeah, I'm just going to throw that in the ring. The best thing about this backyard, we've got everything in this backyard. It's not absolutely huge, but it is zoned off, and that's why I love the different level changes as well. So, we have created a fireplace and barbecue area, and we've got the outdoor alfresco as well. Again, my biggest favourite here are these feature posts right behind. So these are 200 by 200 hardwood posts here, sat on there with a Boston Ivy that comes out, drapples down over the water. That is amazing. This would be the first one that we ever did a cantilevered post over here. Again, when we got the design on this job, they, the guys here said, Dave, go for it. And we had to think of things that we could do, so we went for the hardwood screens here, that was probably one of the first ones done back six, seven years ago. Then we did the hardwood cantilever posts as well. And then the one thing that I do love is the hand laid pebble on the back wall there as well. One by one, glued in, not laid flat, laid sideways. So glue, bang, flat, do it. Put it this way, my boys were doing the heads in. I think it was about three or four days so sitting there, bang, 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 bang. So zone in a bit of Mr. Miyagi when you're doing it but it looks great. I didn't even see the laughing Buddha. I don't know whether it's on the laughing Buddha or he's laughing at me. So <laughs> I'll let him laugh at me. I'm happy. <laughs> I 
old school planting here, azaleas, gardenias, arthropodium, sort of whites and pinks as well. And as I can say, Shauna's obviously put some other stuff in. We've also noticed the arum lily, not a fan of Shauna's, reminds me of white lady funerals, but I don't mind it at all. The bear, no, this is a personal choice from Shauna and Anthony. Uh, like any backyard, you need to put your own personality into it. And you know what? I can bear it. Pun, too bad. <laughs> My favourite part, honestly, is just sitting here and just looking at the garden, how well it's grown. And that's honestly, you can sit up by the fireplace, you sit anywhere, but you know, the boss and ivy here really is the hero. So seeing that, you know, with the water feature, again, too many heroes, I can't nail it down to one. The beauty of seeing a garden like this six years later, it's at its full prime. And they've actually looked after this, which is great, you know. So this is a garden that I come around and go, well, it's grown in absolutely fantastic. You've zoned off all the areas as well, and they've kept it to, Look, I think it looks immaculate. Up next... That shape, the gable, that's all about a sense of home. You know, it's the first thing we draw when we're kids, right? So if you see that, you just go, we're home now. Now we can finally reveal this house in one of Australia's favourite beachside destinations. We're in the heart of Byron Bay today to show you an architecturally designed home with a striking coastal modern facade. We're catching up with architect Joe Snell, who's going to show us through his latest project, a modern twist on the old weatherboard beach shack. Well, this is really cool. I love a black and white house. We've got a black and white house, but in reverse. It's always so striking, such a good combination. I call it a coastal modern look. We've used the linear weatherboard because it's just got really crisp lines. And in this instance, it's all about the fresh white horizontal look. So when you look at this facade, I've actually broken it into two segments. One is your classic home gable, and then the other is a box and they just work together to really bring a bit of charm to the street rather than one big lump. So you've got the white house and then the black windows. Importantly, I wrap those windows around the corners so it becomes a negative on the corner and once again reduces the bulk of the building and makes it a much more beautiful architectural piece to the street. For me, the great thing about this linear weatherboard is it does combine both form and function. I um, you know, we're obviously pretty close to the water here. It's going to be exposed to all those elements. But being an FC product, it's going to stand the test of time, isn't it? Yeah, I think the key thing about linear uh, is that it is that fibre cement, so it's going to outlast us all. The other thing I like about it is you get really clean lines because of the material it's made of. I love the shadow lines that this weatherboard creates. How good is it? Yeah, How it's good great. Is it? I actually love the pitched roof. That, to me, is, is that sort of your classic take on it? I mean, that shape, the gable, that's all about a sense of home. You know, it's the first thing we draw when we're kids, right? So if you see that, you just go, we're home now. Well, I guess if Coastal Modern was your brief, you've certainly carried that through inside the home. Yeah, no, well, the key to this space, and it's a lovely big open plan sort of space, is actually the doors. It is. So you've got two big panels here that slide right back to get that opening, and then you've got these two as well. So it's just that corner piece that totally opens up because the real, real essence of this site is all the trees, the reserve that's out the back, and the idea of having this open plan and bringing that outside in, the, the cross ventilation and the greenery, bringing that in is key. Instead of putting the pool out the back, which everyone, we've got to stop doing that, 
Instead of putting the pool just out the back, we've actually brought the pool into the house. So whenever you are moving around the house, when you come in the front door, the pool is right in your space and in your life. You know, you've got to see a pool first as art and a landscape, and secondary as a swimming pool. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you know, you only use a pool like 1% of the year, even active people. Yeah. So use it first as landscape. I love nothing more than looking at our pool, and I reckon I get in it, what, three times a year? If that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. And like you say, the pool is the art, but so is that beautiful greenery. So if you can just have a house that completely takes that in, yeah. you're halfway there, aren't you? Absolutely. The body of water in a pool has got a cooling effect, not only in reality of air actually running across it and cooling the house, but just the idea of a pool and the reflection of light off it, it feels cool in your mind. So guess what? You start thinking, oh, I'm not having such a hot day in Byron Bay where it does get hot. I mean, the key thing when you're creating a coastal home, it's very tempting to just do it all cool, cool, cool. But it's still a home, so you've got to be in an element of warmth. And we did that here with the timber floors. So we just brought them right through this open plan living. It just sets off the home as a warm place, but then everything else is about a cooling breeze and connection to the outdoors. You also have to think about budget all the time. You know, sometimes I think people get carried away with trying to put a finish everywhere and it just, the budget just explodes. So one of the ways to, to get around that is just to understand what your heroes are. So in this room, there's no doubt that the hero is the kitchen. So we have spent some money on the stone there and then we've got the timber floors, but if you look at the actual room, it's just a plasterboard room, but we did expose the rake of the ceiling. So that's a little bit special, but it's actually not that much more money than if you just did a flat ceiling. So I think it's always about meeting your client's budget, making sure that it's still got wow, but just knowing where to spend your money. I go into so many houses and they've just spent money everywhere. It's almost like you need to know your story and so you can find your hero and just go for that. So what's the difference between, say, a coastal modern home and coastal Hamptons? So the big difference is obviously Hamptons is a style from the past. So it's a nostalgic idea of architecture, um, which is fine, but in this instance, you know, uh, this is supposed to be a modern home. So modern is from here forward. Anything where you look backwards is nostalgic. So that's the big difference. And obviously, once you're trying to become a style, then you've got to follow the rules of Hamptons where in this, where it's modern coastal, you can just follow those rules, which is, you know, form follows function, no fenestration, in other words, no decoration, just keeping it clean, lines, simple, and just creating an amazing lifestyle. Coastal's all about living near the coast and, and the beautiful weather that comes with that. So the whole house is just about bringing that in. Well, you've done a spectacular job and I bet your clients absolutely love living here. It'd be hard not to and thanks for having us through. Pleasure, guys. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. If you would like any of the behind the scenes, including recipes, make sure you check out the Open Homes website and socials. See you next time.